Three, two, one, go. All right, what's up, guys? So this is a little bit different because I wasn't able to record audio. So I decided I would record anyway, and then I would just add the audio later on. So essentially what I'm going to be doing here is just making some assets, making some props. I make a lot of characters. I'm sort of getting into a little bit more of the environments very subtly, just a setting. You know, I want some sort of setting for, you know, these characters for what I'm making just to make the scene a little more interesting. So what I'm essentially doing now is just making plants and things like that. So yeah, uh, welcome to 3D Sculpt and Chill. I don't know if I said that before. Uh, right now I'm just making the ground. I like to make a flat ground, you know, something that everything can just be based on. So I have a kind of a base. I don't use a plane because then when I'm viewing it in orthographic, uh, it doesn't, it won't show. And that's, I really, it really annoys me when I just want to look at something straight on and the plane doesn't show. I don't, I don't know why that just bugs me. So I always use a box. Box just works better for me. Um, and I'm not really sure, I'm kind of doodling here because I don't really have any, I'm not actually going off of reference, but I really like to use the radial repeater when I'm making plants and things like that. So very similar to how I made the gourd and the pumpkin. Uh, this is usually the way that I make my, um, my plants and things like that. So what I'll do is I'll just use radio, I'll use radial, the radial repeater, and I'll just sort of make shapes. And what happens is, even naturally, like if you're using radial, things sort of look organic. They start to look like shapes. So in this one, I think the idea was to make like a little shrub. And I've been seeing these a lot, these little uh, stylized shrubs. And they're just kind of almost like uh, teardrops, but on an angle. So I just wanted to make one of my own. Because I always make these little scenes and I'm like, I want some little bushes or some little shrubs around or something like that. So... I figured I'd make some little pudgy shrubs. And I'm I'm just trying to find sometimes it takes me a moment to figure out the symmetry and how to uh accurately get them, you know, right now I want to just push it and, and make it go off on an angle. So there's certain symmetries that I want to turn off because you know, I don't want it to be front and back depending on how I push it, but I do want it to be symmetrical on uh, like both sides that's so that's that was so confusing to even me but as you can see like I wanted those two sides to be symmetrical not the I should say the left side and the right side but I guess it all looks it all it's kind of confusing because um, you can see that little cube up there I'm always like turning it there you go now I'm turning it to the front so even though I'm not giving you the play-by-play -play, uh, it is kind of nice because I can edit out when I have to clear my throat. So that's that's kind of nice. So all I'm doing pretty much here is just sort of tilting it. Uh, when I think of the radial, I think about the individual, like let's call this a pedal. I think about the inv individual pedal and how I sort of want it uh, shaped. And then the radial tool will allow it to be multiplied almost in the same way as the light tool or lath lath tool so once i hit once i turn it into a radial uh it's just gonna it's just gonna go right around that x axis and make like a cool little shape like that but even this is kind of cool like it just looks like a very interesting shapes interesting shape so it's always fun to just play around with the radial and you can get some really amazing effects using it I don't, I don't, I probably won't put music over this. I'm thinking I'll just chill and just not put music because, uh, normally when I, I don't know, I'm very critical of, of music when I, when I'm watching YouTube, sometimes I'll, sometimes I have to turn a YouTube video off because I just can't take the music. So hopefully I, hopefully I don't do that too much. I'm sure I have before, but that's okay. So I just added some more to the radial, as you can see, uh, just to give it a little more 
a few more uh, petals and the idea is to clone this now I can now I always do this when I'm working on something and I want to clone it and I add it within the same radial repeater like I have here the easier thing to do would be to copy and pay, or would be to clone the whole radial the whole thing so rather than clone this piece and have them both within the same radial it's actually easier to just clone both the piece and the radial and then edit that second like see how I have the second tier it's, it's easier to edit that on its own in its own repeater because what, what sometimes happens is you can still control like the shape like you can move the position around and things like that if you tap on the radial repeater itself you know what I mean like so let's say I wanted to add some more pedals to it if it's within the same radial repeater it's gonna add it to both of those both of the pieces in it whereas if it was two different repeaters then I could do it individually so I know at some point in time here I'm not sure exactly when but I try to I think I think I add a few more of these little tiers tiers as in like levels like I'm working on the second level I guess they are kind of like pushed over tiers as well but that's a little glum glim glub tiers but now see I now I have a, another tier of these little plump little petals and I just move it down And I'm trying to think of the overall shape too, because this is like, I like it, but it also has to be an overall shape. And when I think of a, like a little bush or something, like it's kind of round. So that's when I decide to make this one a little shorter and I could go bigger and sort of make it a tree, but I think I want to do my trees a little bit differently. So that'll be, that'll be one of the next videos. I definitely have to do some trees because when I do my scenes, it'll be really great to have them um, like framed. To be able to frame them in the background and the foreground and have that depth of field. That's like the next thing that I'm really looking for. And I also want to make some hills and stuff too. Just some very stylized, simple hills. Maybe a little, hopefully some more simple than these little plants. But plants are kind of complicated though. But they look really good in the end. That's the one benefit of actually knowing how these are going to look. Because once I finished this, I brought it over to Blender and added it to a scene to this little character I had. And it looked pretty good. And I'm still unsure. I make another plant after this. So I'm unsure if I'm going to make two separate videos or just one. Maybe I should just make two separate videos. Uh... Let me know what, what you think. Sometimes I get complaints that my videos are too long. You know, I mean, it's art, so I'm not really that concerned with it. It's just more annoying. But uh, maybe I'll break this up and have two separate videos. One for this plant and then one for one for the other plant that I make after this. This is just like a little a little stem, sort of like a mushroom. I gotta make, yeah, I'm, I'm, one thing that I'm really paying attention to now is just creating a, a, a cache. I don't know why I want to say cache. I feel like that's a weird word to use in normal everyday talk. Um, just like a folder of assets, a folder of props. Actually, I think that I call the folder props and, you know, props just to add to scenes, just to make the scenes more rich. And things that I don't have to make, if I make them once, then I can just use it uh, from then on. So that, I, that's, that's a lot of my thinking is making these little pieces so that I can use them later on. So it's probably worth it to do it because when I make tutorials and stuff in the future, I'm probably going to use all these little props, you know. So And then I'll just have those little tutorials to point to uh, so 
you know, everything that I try to do, I try to build on things that I've already done or classes that I've done or tutorials that I've already done. Oh, so I think I just, I actually wasn't paying attention, but I think I just tried to um, <clears throat> make some more pedals and it didn't work. So now I'm, you can see I'm repeating. So now I have four radial repeaters of the same thing. And all I have to do is go through and for the first one, I'll delete the bottom three. For the second one, I'll delete, you know, the ones I didn't bleep, delete before. And then the next one, so on and so forth. So essentially I'm just making four new repeaters, one for each level of the little plump pedals. I have to start talking real slow sometimes or I'll just confuse myself and confuse everyone else. Also, I'm not sure if I mentioned, I don't think I mentioned this in the beginning of the video. I'm using a matte cap and that's why my clay is orange, has the orange color. I always use it. Uh, it just, for me, it's just easier to sculpt in things when it's in matte cap, matte cap, matte cap. I always want to say matte cap. I think I called it a matte cap for probably like a year. So it's completely ingrained in my head that it's a met cap, even though it's a met cap. Let me close my window because there's like talking outside. Always oh, some sort of talking or noise. Give me a break. Oh, so I'm uh, I'm going to. You can probably hear the talking. I'm going to Montreal next week for the press conference or press release. Maybe it's a press release um, for the book that I worked on called The Dream Machine. I started working on it. I think I started in 2020. So this is like COVID deep COVID times, um, started working on, uh, this book. And sometimes it's kind of, it's kind of incredible that you'll work on something and you don't really realize the gravity of like what you're getting into and what you're going to be doing and where it's going to be going and how many people are going to see it. And then how many professional people, like, I don't, no matter what I do, I don't think I'll ever consider myself like a professional. And honestly, like I lean away from any sort of like academic type thing. And what I mean by academic is like, uh, for example, like my fiance is like a lawyer, so she can be, she's super academic, very like smart, very book smart, uh, very con conscious of, you know, how she's sp sp supposed to be in certain environments uh, because she's worked in certain environments and you kind of have to be certain ways. You have to be a little bit more academic is what I call it. Uh, I'm a little more, casual and I actually get a lot of amusement from being in situations where normally it's very academic and very like correct academic is probably not the right word but I like just to be kind of very casual and like I'll you know talk to people like very casually uh very polite you know and very respectful and things like that but I do like to keep things very casual um and I think that's one of the strong points of my tutorials, well, I, I hope in my classes, they seem to be doing well. Uh, I, I try not to be too much of like, I don't know. I don't know. I just try to, uh, I try to teach as though I'm like just teaching my friends, you know, and how I would talk to my friends and how I would insert, it's so loud. Hopefully you can't hear it that well. It's just so like, it's like a little, it's like a a thing in my ear, just constantly talking. But I 
All right, let me just, let me, let me pause. All right, so I'm back. It's a little bit quieter. Um, I'm just doing some lighting. And I don't really need to do this because I mostly intend to use these in Blender. And which means that I'll probably be, I'll probably be changing the colors in Blender. Um, but if I'm doing something in Nomad, I like to complete it in Nomad and at least light it. So anyone watching who just wants to work in Nomad will be able to see essentially how I would finish it and use it uh, in Nomad. And of course, I save the file as is. So I can use it, you know, either in Blender or in Nomad if I'm doing a tutorial or doing a class or if I want to include these in some of my new uh, classes. By the way, big news, I am a Skillshare top teacher, which is kind of crazy. I uh, haven't really announced it anywhere yet. I, I kind of want to do something a little special. I know most people are not going to watch this far, so I don't really feel like I'm ruining the big, like, you know, release of that. Oh, it's about to get loud. It's definitely about to get loud. Yeah. My fiance comes in with a vengeance on the phone. And you would think that you would think that it's a, a megaphone. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But here's a little tree. Just adding some nice little lighting. There we go. See? Nice little rim lighting on one side, very plump. Um, but I do need to look at uh, some actual plants and come up some some things that sort of resemble real plants. In a way, that's a bit easier, you know, because you have the framework and you don't have to th think about the designing. I mean, you don't have to think about the designing part you can just think about the constructing part so it's actually a lot easier i need to look at some like succulents and things like that but next thing but i think the next thing i need to do is trees i really need to do trees so trees and some some mountains but i gotta make them like cute and not too not too busy i don't want to take away from the scene you know i just want to so We'll see. Let me pause because now people are on speakerphone. Okay, I'm back. I'm a little bit further away from the microphone. I think you'll be able to hear me just the same. I want to get rid of the swallows. If I could turn off swallowing when I'm recording, I 100% would. Because when I'm listening to it back, sometimes I can hear myself swallow and I absolutely hate it. Uh, the I usually record audio with the iPhone and I don't really have this issue but it might be because the mic is actually above my head and I'm sort of speaking down towards into the iPad so we'll see how it is if I put the microphone a little bit further away uh, but that being said I think this is pretty much the end of this tutorial I'm gonna make the second flower on a new tutorial because there's no reason to blend it all together you're probably sick of my voice but uh, as you can see I'm just putting it back to Maccap so I can start the new design but I will show you some clips of this little shrub in action because I brought it into blender so yeah so this is what it looks like in blender uh, it's a great asset I can use it all the time I need to, I'm going to make some a few other plants, so be sure to tune in for the next video. And I'm also going to make some trees because I want to really want to get some framing and some depth and some mountains. So make sure you subscribe and like because we have a lot more cool Nomad Sculpt assets and characters and creatures and everything in between. All right, keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video.